for the 62nd annual Alpine Bank Junior College World Series in Grand Junction. It uh, is 2019. We've got our 10 teams in. The sun is finally trying to peek out of the clouds. So looks like uh, it could be a, another really good tournament. And it, to me, it looks like it's a wide open tournament. Pretty much anybody's game. We've got no first time teams, which might be a first in a lot of years. So everybody is, at least the coaching staffs have been here. And that, from the coaches I've talked to, is a huge advantage for this team. And we're just gonna kind of run through some of the, the strengths and what we're seeing from the, the 10 qualifying teams. Let's start out with Chipola College out of Mariana, Florida, the two-time defending JUCO World Series champion. I know Jeff Johnson wasn't sure how his team would do in the golf tournament, but they got on a roll, played really well, and uh, won that to get here for the third straight time, trying to become a three-peat champion, and you, you can't count them out. Uh, they played a really tough schedule early. They played some Division I teams for the first time, and it's a, a young team, a lot of turnover on that club, but he does have a couple of players, Joshua Rivera, who's his shortstop hitting 330, and uh, Julio Carrion, who also played last year, has had a really solid season. So they give them a couple of veteran guys to kind of help some of these young guys along. Well, we've also got last year's national runner-up, Walter State, out of Morristown, Tennessee back. Um, Walter is the, is the highest ranked team in the field at number three. Had to beat the number two team in the nation, Gordon College out of Georgia, just to get here. And uh, talking to David Shelton after that game, he said he really was glad he did not have a blood pressure cuff on because it would not have been a good thing. Uh, he said, I he, not sure how they beat Gordon. They just really played well that weekend and won two out of three, which, they've got to do. Um, his, I believe it's his ninth trip uh, with the, the Walters staff. He's in his sixth season as the head coach. He was an assistant before that. Walters has won a couple of titles, so he's got that experience. You know, it's a team that's got uh, some really good players. Look at Braden Combs, who's hitting 376, 13 home runs, transferred from Kentucky. Uh, they've got a couple of D1 transfers that always helps with the turnaround. This is a team that is relying on pitching and defense, which will not be the same Walter State that a lot of fans are used to, hitting the ball all out of, out of the park. They're going to run into some home runs. They're going to hit with some power, but they've built this team on pitching and defense. Monroe College out of New Rochelle, New York, was a first-time qualifier last year. Mustangs came in wide-eyed. They were having a blast. They played really pretty well. Um, a little more veteran this year. Luis Melendez, their coach, said he understands now what this tournament's all about, and that will help him quite a bit in preparing his team. Junior college coach, junior college teams, you got to remember turnover just about every year. You don't usually have a lot of veterans on this these clubs. He's got some kids who played here last year. Uh, they've got some firepower. Went to Texas out of New York to play in some, some early spring games. Got tested there, lost some games, but it kind of made, made them tougher for the end of the season. Uh, <clears throat> freshman first baseman, corner infield guy, Daniel Alfonso is hitting 357. Uh, Hulai Sosa is a sophomore righty, he's six and two. <clears throat> got a 2.04 ERA. Um, 106 strikeouts in 66 and a third innings. So look for them to, to pitch it pretty well. They're gonna be hitting the ball pretty well and uh, they won't be very wide-eyed when they get here. Let's talk a little bit about Chattahoochee Valley Community College out of Phoenix City, Alabama. They've always been a fan favorite when they come here. A very personable coach in Adam Thomas, who unfortunately was forced to resign for health reasons after last season. He's still the athletic director. Um, he's in much better health this year by taking some time off from baseball. He has made himself the head of baseball operations. So he will be here um, watching his team. Hunter Vick, who was his top assistant last year, has taken over. Really smooth transition. Chat Valley is gonna be a fun team to watch, I think. Um, they lost two of their best pitchers early in the season 
to some arm injuries, so they're having to redshirt. He's found some guys to kind of step up and uh, started off uh, seven and five, and then just really got in a nice roll. Davis Schwartz is their leadoff hitter, hitting 373. Not a power hitter until the district championship game when he won. He uh, hit a grand slam to kind of get them to Grand Junction. And, uh, you know, they've got some really good pitchers. Chase Patrick is a sophomore right-hander. He's 8-4 and four with a 3.03 ERA, 81 strikeouts in 77 innings. Um, I, think, I think Chat Valley will be a, a team to watch in this tournament. Cowley College out of Arkansas City, Kansas, and do not call it Arkansas City because it is Arkansas City. Uh, the river is Arkansas everywhere until it gets into Kansas and then it becomes the Arkansas River. Um, the Tigers are yeah, another team that's been out here a lot. They've won some championships out here. Dave Burroughs is a Hall of Fame coach. He knows exactly what this tournament's about, but it's a brand new group this year. None of these guys have been to JUCO. They missed out last year, but kind of continuing the tradition of every class they want them out here to kind of build that tradition and keep that going. Uh, look for Cali to be another team pitching and defense. It really seems to be the theme this year of this tournament. A lot of teams have kind of stocked up on pitching. They play defense. They're still going to hit the ball. They've got guys who can hit it out of the park. A guy to watch is Cody Milligan. He's a sophomore catcher hitting 449, uh, 56 ribbies, five home runs and 27 stolen bases in 27 attempts. You know, I'm really interested to see this kid play. They had uh, had some guys, Brandon Jordan, who is the ace of the pitching staff. He's a sophomore righty. He's 9-2 with a 1-4-3 ERA. Struck out 76 in 56 innings. Again, it's, it's pitching and defense on this team. Cowley wants to, to make a statement this year. Uh, they've only lost two games in the month of May. So they're coming in pretty hot. Navarro College is a team that uh, is, hasn't been out here for a few years, but they've won a championship. Uh, their head coach, Matt Pajinski, was an assistant coach on the championship teams. Um, he's in his 13th year with the program, five years as the head coach. He knows exactly what goes on here. Um, they haven't been here for about five years, so they're gonna be coming in ready to play. Um, had some injuries like everybody early on in the season, got some key guys back and have really been playing well. Stacy Bailey's hitting 326, has nine home runs. Um, they've got a freshman catcher, Dawson Woods, who uh, a lot of doubles. Uh, it's it's a, a solid staff. Carson Rollins is 9-0. He's struck out 50 in uh, 65 and a two-thirds innings. Got some good arms. Um, like I said, once they got some of their key guys back healthy, they really started playing well. I think Navarro's a team that could, coming out of Texas, they could go far. Okay, another team that has been out here just about every year, um, Iowa Western. You know, one of the, the players texted Coach Mark Reardon after they won, Death, Texas, and Iowa Western to Grand Junction. And that's kind of been the, the theme for this team. 12th time in 17 years, the Reavers have been in Grand Junction. And they had to knock off the number one team in the nation to do it. <clears throat> I talked to Reardon after the game. He said, I had no clue how we won those, those games. We didn't play very well. We got enough hits at timely, timely times. Had some pitchers kind of figure some things out. They, uh, they had to piece together a pitching staff this year because of some injuries. And it's like he said, usually pitching, when you patch together a pitching rotation, it does not work well in Grand Junction, but we're gonna see what we can do. Uh, they're gonna hit some balls out of the park. They're gonna run first to third. They're gonna go second to home. They're gonna put pressure on defenses, more of a, maybe a gap hitting team. And if it's a close game, look for Tristan Kimmel to come out of the bullpen. Kids got 17 of the team's 19 saves this year. There were some weekends he had three saves in a three-game weekend. He's got a 1.20 ERA, 30 innings, 46 strikeouts, and a 156 batting average against him. This team can pitch. They've got some low batting averages against. They've got low ERAs. 
again, it's a fairly new group. They had, I think he lost four starting pitchers this year who will medical redshirt. They don't play until Sunday, so uh, they'll kind of soak in the atmosphere, get ready. Uh, look for Jason, Jaden Rolfs. He's hit a do uh, dozen home runs this season. So look for Iowa Western to be in the thick of things, even though they still don't know how they got here beating the number one team in the nation. New Mexico Junior Hall College out of Hobbs, New Mexico, comes in with a veteran coach. He's only in his third season as the head coach at New Mexico, but a lot of people will remember Jimmy Durham as an assistant at New Mexico and for a lot of years at San Jacinto College North. He knows what this tournament's about. He knows how to win here. And he's got New Mexico coming in with a 42 and 15 record and a solid club. Uh, Daniel Hernandez is a sophomore third baseman hitting 426, driven in 53 runs, stolen 13 bases. Mark Marillis is a solid right-handed pitcher. He's eight and one with a save. <clears throat> he struck out 67 and only 56 innings of work. They lost a few games um, to Midland College midway through April. And that kind of turned their season around. They kind of got going after that um, and kind of rattled off several wins and really got on a roll going into the district playoffs. It's always tough to come out of Texas. So look for New Mexico to be a solid team, even though they haven't been here since 2007. Look for New Mexico to make some noise this week. Central Arizona College out of Coolidge, Arizona has got a couple of national championships in the, their resume. Haven't been here for a few years, and they come out of the, uh, the Arizona League that uses wood bats, and uh, now they'll switch, they've switched to metal, and players love that. It kind of gives them some confidence. These kids know how to hit. They know how to play really any kind of game. They're not gonna come in, they don't have to swing for the fences because they know, put the barrel on the bat, move runners, you take that right into a metal bat tournament, and it, it can just explode your offense. They've got a good offense to begin with anyway. Ernie Ordonez is a sophomore infielder, hitting 327, 19 doubles, seven home runs, driven in 62 runs. Clayton Keyes is hitting 316 with five home runs, 31 RBIs. This is a team that can run, um, they can move runners, and again, they're gonna run into some home runs in the thin air, especially with, with some metal bats in their hands. Uh, the pitching staff, Lucas Knowles, 8-2 uh, with a 1.23 ERA, 73 innings, 83 strikeouts. Teams are hitting 200 against them at 205. <clears throat> They've got some very low ERAs, which also has a little bit to do with wood bats, but these guys know how to pitch down in the zone. So look for Central Arizona to, to come in and be a solid team and uh, Make it make again like anybody they can make some noise in this tournament. Connor State, Oklahoma, a very interesting story. They're 48 and 11. Perry Keith is another Hall of Fame coach, he's been here before. He's a, he's a very good coach, he's in his 34th season, so he's the dean of coaches when it comes to this tournament. Connor State playing in Grand Junction won't be anything new to them, they have not played a home game all season. Uh, they're trying to get turf put into their field in Oklahoma. Um, they've got the money. The, the project just took a little bit longer. So they played every game on the road, played a couple at high school stadiums. Uh, but they've been the home, the home team like nada this season. So I think if they win a coin flip and get to be the home team, they'll be pretty excited about that. I think they have been the home, home team for games, just not on their home field. Um, Omni Ortega is a freshman outfielder hitting 378, five home runs, 51 RBIs, 12 for 12 stolen bases. Uh, it's a team that can do a little bit of everything. Um, Brian Martinez is 8 and 4 with a 3.39 ERA, 76 strikeouts in 71 and two thirds innings. He's only walked 11. So again, I think you're going to see pitching and defense. David Mendham is hitting 421 with 14 home runs. He's going to supply some power. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a really solid team. Again, they haven't been here for several years, but Perry Keith's experience is going to help the Cowboys.